Alright guys, so we are back with a brand new video and we're going to go ahead and get started with creating our own custom components as well as a brief introduction to JSX. So when you first open up app.js, you're probably wondering, well, what is all of this stuff? Right? We have a function, we have a return key, and you can see that we actually have HTML inside of our JavaScript file and you've probably never seen something like this before. Well, this HTML is actually not HTML. It's actually known as JSX and it's very similar to HTML. All JSX allows us to do is to combine HTML with JavaScript. There's a whole other stuff that we can do with JSX. We can bind variable values to HTML attributes or also known as JSX attributes. We can interpolate variable values. So let me show you an example. Let's say in my app, I'm going to declare a variable called title and I'm going to give the value of Anson and I'm going to just get rid of this P tag and I'll use an H1 tag. So let's say if I wanted to display Anson. I could obviously just do this and then it would work just fine. Now, this defeats the whole purpose of having this variable. So instead, what I could do is I can use interpolation. So I can process the contents of title. So if I save, you're going to see that it still says Anson. So if I change the value to Anson the developer, you're going to see that Anson the developer is displayed to the DOM. Okay, so that's cool stuff that we can do with JSX, which basically, again, like I said, we can embed JavaScript within HTML. And you'll also notice that we have class name attribute. Now this allows us to attach classes, CSS classes to our components. In HTML, this would be just class, but in JSX, it's class name. And again, you'll notice a lot of similarities between HTML and JSX. But anyways, let's actually go ahead and get rid of all of this stuff. I'm gonna just get rid of this logo from the top because we're not using it. All right, so we're gonna get started with building out some simple components. So let's say, for example, we're gonna build out a simple nav bar. So I could technically put it inside app.js. So this nav bar is going to have this unordered list and this unordered list will have several list item elements. So we can have home. And I'll just copy this a couple times. And if I save it, you're gonna see we should have an unordered list and this is giving us weird CSS is because we have CSS over here. So I'm just gonna get rid of this CSS and this should be just like that. Okay, great. So I could technically leave this nav bar inside here. Okay, but that would defeat the whole purpose of, well, that would defeat one of the purposes of React. The whole point is to have a bunch of different components that represent different entities within your application. So we can definitely abstract this component away from app.js and we can make it more modular. So that way we can actually reuse this component over and over again. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and create a new folder called components and we're going to create a new file called navigation.js and what we're going to do is we're just going to follow the same structure as app.js so basically every single component you're always going to have to import react the module and then you can import whatever else you want after so you can import your css if you want but then we're going to use the function keyword and we're going to declare a function, which is basically our component. And this is also known as a functional component. Okay, there are class-based components, but we're not gonna get into that right now. Okay, so now we have our function navigation component. And the next thing that we need is a return keyword that will return the contents of our component. All right, so next thing that we wanna do is we wanna copy our navbar and remove it from app.js. And I'm gonna specify a pair of parentheses because I'm returning this whole thing. So we wanna enclose inside parentheses. Okay, and then that should be it. Whoops. And the final thing to do is to export navigation. Okay, so I can actually just add the export default right in front of over here. We can see that down here, they do it separately. It's up to you, but I like to do it this way. Okay, so now if I go over to our React app, you're gonna see that we don't have our component. That's because we need to import it into app.js. So we're going to import and then we're going to give our component a name. So navigation from components navigation. Okay, and we don't need to specify .js because it knows it's looking for a .js file. Okay, so now we're going to render our component by using angle brackets. So the same way with any HTML tag. So in this case, we have navigation. And then we can actually just 
close it off like this and Visual Studio Code will automatically enclose it like this. You could do it like that and you're gonna see that we have our nav bar component right over here. But there's also a shorthand to this. You can just do navigation forward slash angle bracket and that would achieve the same thing. It looks much more cleaner too. So I would highly suggest using this whenever you can. And if I were to go into the elements in the dev console and I clicked on root and we click on app you're going to see we now have our nav bar right over here which is just in a separate file and you're probably wondering why should we do this why should we put everything in a different component why can I not just put everything inside this app function well the whole point is to abstract everything away in its own component the navigation bar can be its own component. We can keep all the logic, all the styling inside this navigation component within itself. And whenever we want to alter it, we can just go inside this file and then make our changes and it'll update everywhere that we have it rendered. If you were to put everything inside one component, it's going to be very hard to maintain. It's going to be very hard to test your component with testing libraries. It's going to be very hard to literally scroll through every line of code just to get to a certain point. So you wanna get into the habit of building components and then importing them whenever you need it or wherever you need it rather. Okay, so let's create one more component. So let's say I want a form for my users to type stuff in. So I'll go ahead and create a new component called register form.js. And again, we're going to import react from react and then we're going to export default function register form and what we're going to do next is we're going to go ahead and use the return keyword parentheses and we're going to use the form html element and we're going to go ahead and just have an input name username type is going to be text and let me give it a placeholder username and i'm just going to copy this and paste it two times and for this we'll do password and then confirm for the name attribute and the type will be password and then password confirm okay so we have our simple register form component this would be used for handling registration for our application so now we're going to import register form from components register form and we're going to render it just like that and you're going to see that we have our form now username and password confirm and if i were to go inside the elements inside dev console you're going to see that we have our form right over here okay so instead of having everything again inside just one component we are keeping them away in their own respective components and so now i can modify register form whenever i want and the changes would be applied to app.js as well so hopefully this video gave you guys a brief introduction to components in React, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Peace.